In terms of adventure and sheer natural beauty, Costa Rica has it all. The only thing missing here is you. Costa Rica itself, it's, a, it's a, like a, a Disneyland, I would say. It's a, like a, a country with so many things to do, so it has a big, big diversity. You can find uh, very beautiful lodges in the middle of the jungle, uh, five-star barefoot luxury lodges uh, with very high standards, uh, very eco-friendly, very sustainable. We have adventure, we have um, wellness, beaches, hot waters, uh, volcanoes. In Costa Rica you also have amazing people who will treat you like royalty. It has grown a lot and everybody knows us as a Pura Vida people. It's exactly what we are, uh, meaning everything is fine, everything is okay, uh, meaning what we're looking for in life. Uh, we are, it's a very positive uh, slogan. What? Everywhere you go, you will definitely feel and live Pura Vida. And you can do it in the lap of luxury at places like Aloft. Uh, we chose San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, uh, because it's a great, great place for tourism. It's a great place for business. Uh, we are located on the west side of San Jose, very close to, to the airport very close to the route that takes you to the beaches and to the mountains and to the uh, national parks. So it uh, provides a very easy stay. There are also hotels such as the Bougainvillea, where nature, in this case a large garden, becomes their calling card. I'll quote a, an American I met years ago in the garden. I hadn't seen him for years. And he said, you know something? This, this is not an hotel with a garden, it's a garden with a hotel. Many people have said that this is the best thing in Costa Rica, so that's included in the, in the room price, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a big plus, of course. Not too far from San Jose is the Poas Volcano, something you have to see. Even on a cloudy day, it's worth the drive. And what a drive it is. There are plenty of places to pull over and admire the views of San Jose down below. See the clouds roll in. Look at those houses colored red, white, and blue. Costa Ricans are very patriotic. Some paint their homes to match the country's flag. This is a place to explore and wander off into the rainforest. Keep going. Follow a stream until you find this, your very own waterfall. All this water is flowing from Poas and its jungle. The top of the volcano is lush with vegetation, something you see as you make the final journey on foot to the main viewpoint at Poas Volcano National Park. This is a volcano that has it all. I mean, you can be very close to the city and you can come here in one day, get to here and see the one of the biggest craters, uh, the biggest one in our country, and we know it's one of the biggest ones in the world. On a, on a clear day, how beautiful is it to look down there and, and see the, the, the mouth of the crater and, and, and the lake itself, which is pretty unusual for a volcano to have a lake on it, correct? If you come in a clear day, and I mean, the whole view of the crater and all the environment around it, it it's, it's amazing. And while up here, we ran into yeah. Bailey McGrath. It's fun to be on the top of an active volcano. <laughs> so, so at some point we could all perish, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. It's risky. McGrath is no stranger to Costa Rica. I love Costa Rica. I've been here before and I haven't traveled that much but I came back here because I love it so much. Um, I feel like there's a lot to offer because you can go to different places in the country and see different things. There's the rainforest and the beaches. McGrath and a friend have been seeing all this beauty by car. We actually uh, rented a car so we've been driving around and I know some Spanish but it's not very good but people have been very receptive to give me directions when I need it, even though my Spanish isn't very good, but they've been patient with me and happy to give me directions just on the side of the road. As you drive around, you might just run into a small town like Sarcero in its Parque Francisco Alvarado with its world-renowned topiary garden. It's the creation of one man who has been taking care of it since the 1960s. 16 arches carved out of cypress hedges lead you to the beautiful San Rafael Church built in 1895.
as we were coming down from the volcano, we got hungry. Everybody kept saying, you got to do the trout thing. Basically, you catch them, then you eat them. So we gave it a shot. Others were catching trout, having a good time, but we quickly learned one thing. It's not as easy as it looks. You could starve to death out here. We kept trying. We kept going until we got one. I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. In the end, as much as I hated doing it, I put my trout in the bucket and handed him or her over to where it got cleaned, weighed, and prepared to become my dinner. The cook added spices, placed it on the grill, poured some wine on it, and off I went with a great meal. With a full stomach, we hit the road with the good folks at ICT, the Costa Rican Tourism Institute. Along the way, we pull over and see how some of the vegetation appears to cry when hit by the rain. Further up the road, we stop at a river with a very colorful bridge and a quaint little town. Something very interesting to point out as we visit this neighborhood, even though we're miles away from the Poas volcano, you can still smell and breathe the sulfur in the air. Is it dangerous to breathe in the sulfur that apparently is in the air everywhere? It's actually all around because we're at the base of the volcano, but I think that apparently makes us look better. Uh, I would say dangerous only if you get so close towards the uh, crater where the activity is going on. So several times, as far as I remember, they have closed the entrance to the park to the volcano for that reason. But down here, it seems like probably we just get used to it and don't even notice it. Porfirio Hidalgo is a historian in the town of Sarchi, which is known for a very unique type of art seen throughout the country. Something you see a lot of in Costa Rica are wagon wheels. They are said to be monuments to the instrument that helped build the world. There used to be the only way of transportation in Costa Rica. So think of this, living or being here at the Central Valley, looking around the area, we are surrounded by mountains. So those days, being this the area where we produce coffee, the best area for coffee, we have to transport it all the way down to the port of Punta Arenas and the only word of transportation were the Oxfords. So they used to paint them kind of a plain red, orange, yellow colors, but suddenly they had an idea of decorating the Oxfords with flowers in order to make them look prettier. So they came in front of the church, the priest uh, blessed them and everything. They went to the jury. By the time they get to the jury, the flowers were faded. And they said, we have to find another way to make our Oxfords to last looking that pretty. So that's how these start putting kind of those models or those designs you see over there resembling flowers. And in the same time, when the Oxfords were rolling, it seems like they are uh, dancing because of the colors going around. The abundance of water around Sarchi is used as a source of energy. The water runs the equipment. The equipment powers the bandsaw used to cut the wood for the carts which are still made and painted by hand by local artists. Venga, venga, venga. Not too far from Sarchi, we ran into Don Marcos and his team of ox. They were pulling one of those colorful carts, and guess what? He let me ride it. I always wanted to be a gladiator, just never thought I'd be doing it in Costa Rica. As for what he's got back here, well, just a bunch of tall grass for the animals, and look what I found. You can never go wrong with a big old machete. Don Marcos is in his late 80s, but he's still going strong in this land of volcanoes. There are more than 200 volcanoes in Costa Rica. Half of them are active, but none more majestic than Arenal. 
Arenal stands more than 5,400 feet tall. It's Costa Rica's most active volcano. The last eruption took place in July of 2010. It's a constant threat to towns such as La Fortuna, but it's definitely also quite a sight. At the base of Arenal is an activity you might want to try, zip lining, and it's a lot of fun, but don't take my word for it. Very easy, so it's not difficult at all. Absolutely incredible. It's better than the pictures. You can just see for miles and miles. So the scenery, the waterfalls are phenomenal. Um, and it's just really beautiful. It's, it's, the, it's so green. Arenal is also responsible for this river. The water comes from deep within nearby Arenal. You can find all this at the Tabacón Resort. The river cuts right through the property, forming waterfalls, ponds, and hot springs. It's a true tropical paradise of nature and relaxation. And what makes Tabacón really unique is nothing man-made, it's nature. Our guests are able to enjoy a, a special relaxing time in the heart of the rainforest. It was hard to leave this place, but with so many volcanoes in Costa Rica, you'll find thermal rivers throughout the country, some harder to find than others. This is the Lost River. It probably gets its name because it's really hard to find, but it's easy to see why so many people look for it, wanting to bathe in its thermal waters and hot springs. It's a beautiful thermal river along a volcanic canyon, which is amazing. It, lots of nature, vegetation, beauty, rocks. It's so natural, so wild. And that's the only place where we found it in Costa Rica. So that's why we built it here. What awaits the people who come here for a week or 10 days of relaxation? Study says that the minerals of the water, in the water, are, and the ones that we have at, on the volcanic mat, those minerals are so healthy and so nice for the skin that that's what makes them so nice and so uh, desirable for people. But the Rio Perdido Resort is a lot more than just a river and wellness. It's a place for adventure. You either go on mountain biking or do the zip line or do the tubing or any of the hiking we provide at the property. So that's what we offer at Rio Perdido, an experience. Sounds terrific. As for me, I just wanted to swim and sit in the water. Whether you do it here or at Tabacón, it really does have an amazing effect on your body and mind. The beauty of Costa Rica extends offshore. It's an undiscovered underwater haven, perfect for scuba diving. There's a lot of sea life in these waters, but our underwater adventure actually started in the pool of our hotel. Good morning, I'm Salvador. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, my friend. My name is Harry. I'm from BA Diver. Harry and his crew brought out all this equipment to teach us how to scuba dive and do it safely. Most people can learn how to dive. Most people can learn because diving is, is very easy. If you do everything correct, diving will be very easy. Off we went into the pool. Two others in our crew, JP and Tony, were learning along with me. And like Harry said, soon we were making bubbles. We then learned basic hand signals, how to clear water from our masks, recover our regulator by doing a swim move. We practiced a bit and after 45 minutes in the pool, we were ready for the Pacific Ocean. After loading up our gear, our day with BA divers continues. We're heading to an area called Meros, where we'll be diving at a depth of no more than 40 feet because we're all rookies. It's sort of our final exam. We're all very excited, looking forward to this test in our day of adventure under the water. No turning back now but somehow we knew it was going to be great. Costa Rica, exotic diving at its best. In no time at all, we were swimming with the fishes, but alive and well, not like Luca Brazzi in The Godfather. 
And then something unbelievable happened. The whales and other sea life did not disappoint. A great time was had by all, including 13-year-old Catherine Rockwell. It was a little bit easier than I expected. I got a little bit nervous at first, but then it was really fun. Amazing, incredible, all of those things put together. Like, definitely do it. It was really amazing and fun. Also on our boat were Dr. Mel Gold and his wife, Jacqueline. We recommend BA divers very highly. They were impressed by the crew and their time in the water. Comfortable diving, the temperature of the water was wonderful, the staff on the boat were so helpful, the guide was great. We can't recommend them highly enough. And the fish, beautiful, beautiful schools of fish. Lots of different things to see, eels and rays and saw a shark and... First time it, shark. Yeah, <laughs> first time shark. So it, it was great. This was a great dive. The reason they even set foot in Costa Rica in the first place is quite a story. Our home was destroyed in Hurricane Katrina. And after that, my wife said she wanted to move to Costa Rica. I said, you've never been to Costa Rica. She said, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I want to move to Costa Rica. I want to go where there are no hurricanes. Right. And I said, well, OK, well, one day we'll go. And so today's the day. That's why we're here. <laughs> we just had a blast in the water. Now it's time to have some fun on the water. BA Divers also offers tubing. Photographer Marco Gonzalez, brothers Ben and Jason from Boston and I go for a quite a ride. After a full day on and in the water, we almost didn't get off the boat as the storm kept us from unloading our camera equipment. At first the rain felt great on a hot day, but the novelty quickly wore off. Eventually we did get ashore and got to spend a beautiful night under the stars at Playa Hermosa. Costa Rica continues to amaze us, its landscapes, its incredible views everywhere you go, nature, just amazing. Right now we're in the town of Santa Barbara with my new friend Charlene. In this town they don't want to let go of their customs, their culture, their history, they want to preserve it forever. Come with me. Let's check out a living museum here in the town. El arroz de maíz, a base de maíz con gallina. On the grounds of the Casona de Guanacaste Museum, we found an outdoor kitchen preparing a feast. A wonderful rice and corn stew with chicken is almost ready. The albondiga soup smells heavenly. Handmade tortillas are on the skillet. Everything is cooked with firewood, no gas stoves, no ovens, just like they did it long ago. All this food is slowly and lovingly prepared and served for us and everyone who visits. It took two days to prepare all this food. Every single ingredient comes from this region. Even the plates are made here, and I wish you could taste it. It is incredibly, incredibly good. The museum is owned by Claudia Padilla. She runs it and lives here with her family. Why does the town want to keep its roots, its, its history, and its culture? Why is that so important? We conserve this house because it's important to remember how to live the people before us, uh, uh, before formerly generation. For example, they live uh, in, in a simple way of life. Santa Barbara is also well known for marimba. Just about everyone in town plays it, even this young man who has been blind since birth. They learn to play without sheet music, no notes, no formal training, just a good ear, heart, and hands that seem to glide as they make beautiful music. Before we leave, it's time for a cup of coffee, not just any coffee. They brew it the old-fashioned way, pretty much a towel shaped like a sock. Coffee goes in, followed by hot water. This is among the best coffee in the world. Why? Because local growers keep the best beans for their coffee. The beans haven't been sitting in a boat or in a warehouse for months before reaching your cup. 
Sadly, we have to say goodbye to Santa Barbara and its good people. We're bound for Liberia, which comes from the word libertad or freedom. It's the largest city in the region of Guanacaste. The town used to be part of Central America's Camino Real, the Royal Highway. It's now a paved road that runs right by the city's cathedral. Esta es una región que fue... On a park bench, we find Gabriel Barrantes, a local engineer and town historian. He talks about the region's history when cattle were driven right through here. The Guanacaste trees, which are found throughout this area, were ideal for the cows. They provide ample shade. Back in Liberia, Don Gabriel and I take a stroll through the city's main plaza. He tells a story of a local hero who went to bat on behalf of Costa Rica. But instead of a bat, he used a flaming torch. We're talking about this fellow, Juan Santa Maria. In the 1800s, there was an American named Walker who hired a bunch of henchmen from Nicaragua to knock some heads. Walker wanted to convince people to give him Costa Rica. Santa Maria found out where the thugs were spending the night and went over there with the torch and burned down their house. Unfortunately, he died in the process, but the bad guys and Walker never came back. Up, 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 up. Cattle is still very much a part of Costa Rica's economy. You don't have to walk far to see cows roaming free or in pens. Even cows in Costa Rica seem to be a little bit more interesting than what we see in California and other places across the country. People like Rodrigo raised them. He takes care of his cows for about six months before sending them to slaughter. He can sell them for about 450,000 colones or about $800 per head. As we leave Rodrigo and his cattle, we discover another Costa Rican treasure. Every country has a national drink. In Costa Rica, it's guaro, and it's made out of sugar cane. People say it's so strong, you can power your car with it. Tú eres la que me decía que nunca me olvidaría. Vámonos emborrachando que caramba y hasta que amanezca el día. Vámonos emborrachando que caramba y hasta que amanezca el día. Why is it so strong? It nearly put a hole in my gut, man. I'm still thinking of your face when you drink it. Uh, the reason is actually because this started as a, as a whole tradition here in the country, why people in the fields start making it or creating their own uh, alcoholic drink, moonshine out of sugar cane. Enuado is very much a part of the good times in Costa Rica, where even a dead piece of fruit adds to the cycle of life. This party on the street is La Cimarrona. It's done during holiday celebrations or special family gatherings. Essentially, the giganta, the tall woman, dances to the beat, accompanied by the devil, donkey, skeleton, and the grim reaper. She chases and scares people. It's a great honor to be in that costume. It's usually reserved for the head of the household or the person staging the party. It is quite a spectacle. Aside from being a great honor, it's been a lot of fun, great exercise. It's been a true honor being part of this Costa Rican tradition. It's hot. Let's go eat. Let's go have a beer, huh? Not only is there beer waiting for us, but a huge feast is in the works with the main dish being... Chicharrones. Giovanni Rojas is making chicharrones, chunks of bacon cooked in lard with garlic, salt, and a few cups of water. He uses the rim of a tire at the base of the fryer to lock in as much of the heat as possible. It takes about an hour to cook them just right. Crunchy on the outside, but tender and delicious on the inside. With the chicharrones almost done, a hairdryer sparks up the grill where tender cuts of beef are being prepared. On this night, we're also having fried bananas, ceviche, and so much more. In Costa Rica, during gatherings, they have a tradition. They drop bombs or do poetry. Soy magaseño, hombre por todo orilla, con los machos me junto. Y cuando al tocar empiezan las teclas de una marimba, me empino sobre los caites y gritos, tocan el punto, guanacastec. Uy, 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 bajuna. Then they toast with a local made alcohol. It's a sugar cane and a local fruit, and it's been fermenting for two years in the ground and it's brought out for special gatherings like this one. Salud, Joe. Salud.
<laughs> and after more drinks and a ton of food, music of a different sort. Costa Ricans love karaoke, and they sang well into this night, but what a night it was. The next morning we found ourselves strolling through this market, looking at all the great fruits and vegetables, pineapples that smell so sweet. This is where we ran into Dwight and Judy Jacobson. What's the best part about being in Costa Rica? The people. The people are, I've been throughout Central America, and lived on, grew up on the Arizona-Mexico border, and the people in Costa Rica are the friendliest of any that I've ever met. The Jacobsons moved here from Arizona eight years ago. Everywhere you look, there's something to look at or take a picture of. Do you ever get used to all this beauty and greenery around here? I hope you never take it for granted because it is a beautiful country. Anywhere you go in Costa Rica, it's different, but it's beautiful. We tell our friends, the people, the food, the farmer's market. The fresh air. The fresh air. The taxes, the insurance, the medical, it's, it's just all wonderful. This is Ciudad Quesada. It's one of those wonderful places in Costa Rica where you walk the streets and feel right at home. You feel safe and secure. Folks are truly happy you're visiting and exploring. Another thing you notice a lot in Costa Rica is soccer. It's everywhere. The game is the country's national sport and people talk about it all the time. It's front page news every day in all the newspapers. Some games they'll even let anyone play, even me. One thing I quickly discovered while playing with these guys is that I also stink at soccer in Costa Rica. Regardless, they welcome me with open arms. And that's Costa Rica in a nutshell. Eres mi consentida, tu reinas mi vida. Our walk on this 100-year-old bridge is the end of our journey in Costa Rica. It feels like we took a stroll through the outskirts of heaven. That will be hard to forget. I will always remember this site. Cosas extravagantes, dime que es tu placer.